something with the pencils or pens. These pens suck, but it's good to know. I don't like the paper cast off pens. My cons better. Yeah, I really like. I found that I, my con works longer, mm -hmm. but I had problems with these. They seem to. I think like they just don't flow easily. No, they don't. Right. Yeah. So and. Sailor, they have one too, and, and it's good, but I find it doesn't have a long life. Yeah, I and so I found that the Micron ones work the best. Um, these, but I and Sharpie, yeah. But I don't think they have as many nib sizes. No. But yeah, these are good too. And I've found that they generally have a decent life. Um, the Sharpie, actually, even though it's not fancy, it just is a good mm -hmm. pen, yeah. <laughs> and it works. Um, I think you'll probably like the Micron ones for design. That's what a, a lot of designers use. Okay, but nevertheless, you did a good job. And so, I do like these guys, they're brush pens though. Yeah. And they have a whole line of brush pens. You can buy them individually, they put different colors. Mm -hmm. There's little sketching sets that you can get with different colors in them. Mm -hmm. um, and I do like those. But yeah, the fine tips are kind of that's a great. Um, okay, so let's hope one of these works. Chase it a little bit, but not brush pen. Mm -hmm. so it's not what we need right now. So maybe the medium. All right. So we first talked about that we want to make some adjustments to this. You've done such a so much of a better job here. This is great. Um, do you have the photo? Let's have a look at it because there's probably a few embellishments we could add to this to really have it feel like an old home, right? Now I'm like, I don't even know if I got it. Well, I don't really have an old photocopy of it that's not as good, but it might be good enough for what we need to see. I got one. It's a little faint, but it should do. Okay. So, so this was the photo you were working from and made some adjustments. I actually like I like what you've got. It's quite nice. And you ended up doing quite a good job. That door worked out great. Mm -hmm. So yeah let's add a few embellishments to this plus our first thought is we're gonna crop this a bit, right? So because this wall is so foreshortened and that's what the photographer chose to do too. Right? Mm -hmm. So oftentimes when things are really foreshortened they just look weird anyway. So let's just crop it a bit. And allow enough room under the feet the table. And probably pretty close. Maybe just taking a little bit off the top. That's good. So, um, when you want to work within what you have without doing any too many changes because we don't want to be able to, we don't want to have to do any major doctoring here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. So um, one of the things this side here, the base of this doorway is, is good and correct, right? But it comes back. So this one, it's a little got a little confusing here because all your lines came straight down to the floor. And we so where this is, right? So that's the top. We need that. So this is this is the edge of the casing down here, right? So we follow that down. That's oh, yeah. the bottom of it, and it's so wide. Like this isn't this line isn't really there with that shading there. It should have been all the way across. But since you drew that line. Let's say it's not an open doorway, there's a door in it. Okay. So that now that makes sense. So what we're gonna do is we just draw a line at the bottom there so that there's a door sitting inside there, which means that we need this. So just add a line there. And now there's a door inside that doorway. Okay. 
and it's going to be so foreshortened that nobody's going to notice. You know, mm -hmm. it'll be fine, and we're going to crop it tight here anyway. Um, now we want some baseboards, right? It's an old house, and it's got high baseboards, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so technically, because we're seeing the side of this, like you drew here, mm -hmm. right? We see the side here, so that. Um, I guess it depends where you want to put it. Maybe what we can do, because like this would have been in like this, right? And then back. Maybe would you know? You see this side yeah. here. You're gonna see the side there. So, but what we can do is maybe use this line as well. There is a baseboard, and there's probably quarter round on it, and we can probably still use that line because um, the baseboard is gonna butt up against this trim anyway. So it, it's better to draw everything. <laughs> we should have drawn that in sooner, but um, so let's see what we can do with this to kind of make it work. Um, so put a line there. So and then of course there's always edit in the so this is your vanishing point, right? right? So we're gonna we've got what looks like a good six inch baseboards there, right? So we put the vanishing point. Uh, so really then there's a little curvy thing on it. So, this line there really shouldn't be there. Um, it may not be that noticeable. Or you could try editing it out and scan it, bring it in, which would be easy, it's just a line going, because mm -hmm. it'd be easy to pull that off. And then, um, and then into the corner. Just don't even have to put much effort into that. Um, and then this one, a lot of it's hidden, so it's pretty forgiving, too. You want to make sure it looks like it's the same height, right? So pull that across. I'm just looking. Okay, there's like two lines. And there's a little curvy bit. And then a couple of lines. And this is kind of hidden behind there. But make sure it looks like it lines up with use your ruler and a pencil to do the guidelines before you draw them. So there's the top edge. And make sure you draw it with your ruler from the vanishing point because it's going to get wider as it comes forward, right? Mm -hmm. Which looks like I'm drawing parallel. Isn't that typical? Because <laughs> we know it's supposed to be. So to, you know, with space words, you don't always have to draw them really carefully, but if you give them a couple of little lines, then they look good, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's believable, right? So, it would have been nice to have a crown out here, but because you already have this drawn so solidly, it's probably better not to. Okay. Um, you could join it this way, though, on top of here, if you want. Um, and then these don't have any depth yet. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. So we should add some depth to those. So, um, or say there's, you know, probably with a door this big, this is all trim around here, right out to the wall. So how about we add a shadow line here, so the thickness before the door. This could touch it. The thickness here. Vanishing points again for each corner. Oops, not in. What do they do? Oh, yeah, I'm coming out from this, right? So I have to stick it on. It'll be really thin line, I'll make it really thin, right? Mm -hmm. I'll just make a bigger line there. Um, the other thing, if you don't want to come forward this way because you don't want it to look too thin, 
Oh, you couldn't really add it here because then this space isn't going to be right. So you'll have to add it out rather than in, right? Um, and then just put maybe a couple of lines. Just like kind of it, just like what I did there. Yeah, like to give it a sense of, you know, it's it's traditional molding of yeah. some kind, right? Going around here, that's maybe lighter cut. And you've used a straight edge, so it's really easy to do. Mm -hmm. So let's do you have a straight edge? Let's show you. What I like to do when I'm doing moldings, um, I might do one line a little quicker slow down a little bit on one of them because it's a bit more shadowy and then another lighter quicker line and it gives it a little bit more sense of reality and shadow because typically traditional moldings they're not all equal mm -hmm. right if i want to give a sense of shading if it's you know an og shape then i might just skim a few light lines up it to create sort of a sense of shading. And then finish with a harder line. Say it right there to the you know, mm -hmm. and make sure that it fits to a 45. Right? Right there. Right. Um, and then with a thicker pen, I like what you did here. Sometimes just using a thicker pen on the side where you can see the edge, right. like in here, you see this side, right? So you can just take your thicker pen and draw a line, or do two thin ones to show that I get, I see the side of that. I see the underside of this. So that helps that have some depth. We also see on top, because it's below our level, but we don't see the thickness of that. So that's a single line or a thin line. Okay. So you can either just do a dark line, and that's why I like having lots of different pens, mm -hmm. that I might just do a heavy line where the shadow is, um, and you know, a thin line where, where I can't see the edge and there's no shadow. So similarly to the uh, um, raised panels there, and we say, okay, this one's casting a shadow. I'm going to do a dark line there. And I'm going to see the thickness here. I'm going to do a dark line there. And then this part's raised, right? So I'm going to do a shadow under there and a shadow there. So the opposite with these two L's. Okay. Okay. So if you just go over with your thick pen and do that on all the raised panels, going to give a little bit more sense of um, volume and traditional design to that, right? Okay. okay. So you can do that to all of those. I don't think you really need to draw the diagonal, but you can if you do it really thin and quick. Um, now this door, it's got quite a lot of profile to it. You could also add a second line if you want to make it feel more like a um, shape to that raised panel. Um, depends how much effort you want to put into it. I'm just scared I'm going to make it, like my last one kind of looked like a fun it. house. Yeah, like yeah, but you, here you're using a ruler yeah. now. So as long as you stay parallel, like if you take this down with your T-square and set square, you know, your little crafting triangle, you're going to be okay. Um, but, you know, you don't have to. You at least just do that to it, and it, it's going to get yeah. a little dimension um, and look a little nicer, okay? Yep. So, um, and that's enough. Now, if you want, you can say that's where the bottom of the crab molding would be, right? So you say, okay, I'm going to do one here. And then, so crab molding comes forward and out. So we end up with sort of an angle like that. It'll look smaller at the back because if we're shortening and a little bit wider at the sides. So 
really do maybe a couple of lines at the top and just a little curve here if you want to dress it up a bit if you think it looks fine the way it is then leave it okay so you could do that if you like so what it will look like is i think it will look nice if i try and do that because of the baseboards you know? i think it would just make sure you use a lot of times when I'm first drawing them, I'll draw them light using vanishing point in my ruler. And then I'll go, okay, which ones would be the shadow lines? And I'll pick enough of those. And make it a bit of quick skimming for the shading. And I'm not doing a very neat job. But <laughs> you're going to use your ruler so it'll be neat. I think it gives it a lot more presence yeah. up here. I think it's worth doing. So do your pencil guidelines first so you know you like it. And that's good. You did a great job here. So then for the floor. And the floor, I think, you know, you got a point. If you put a carpet, it either should be bigger mm -hmm. so that it covers the door that go from casing to casing. Mm -hmm. Right? and then have your floorboards. Which probably would be nice because it's a little bit clean. Yeah, kind of And it does give it a little more grounding. So it? when I do it, how should I, like should I just leave it blank? Um, what would be a good idea is to get your fine pen out. What's the thinnest one you have? Oh okay. no. That's the smallest one? Okay. So with your ruler, well of course it's a traditional house, so traditional carpet. And just give a few quick and really skimming really lightly the way you did on that. Mm -hmm. Just kind of fast. And just, you know, suggest a border. Okay. Right? And then you might just kind of if you comfortable to do that. <laughs> if not, just do a few yeah. lines, right? You could even um you want to give it a sense of surface. Really quick on the surface. Just to give it a sense of it's there. <laughs> it's hard to do it light enough and quick enough for the kind of pattern, yeah. you know. Um, pencil would look foreign on this drawing, so what I could see if I have any of these that are a bit dried up. That's nice for doing stuff like this. You can do it quick and thin and it doesn't seem too dark because you don't want it to stand out a yeah. lot. But, you know, you might give a sense of some medallion in there or something like that. You know, and you just suggest it. So yeah. It's, but it has to be so fine and light that it doesn't take too much attention, right? Yeah. And you'd make the border maybe a little bit more noticeable. So that that shows stronger than these marks but this is such a fresh pen i'll see you if i have the fine old one okay so there what i used to do is i'd mark my pens with i don't know some tape or something this is the fresh one so that i've got my really nice strong lines and this is my old one yeah so that hey that's perfect and i just want to do textures or patterns very subtly on so far floor or something so you don't have to throw away your old pens so then the floorboard, would I just take my vanishing point yeah. and just really yeah. thinly and draw it? Yeah. So similar method. Probably just using the, the fine pen again. So these are old, big, wide planks, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want, you could double line it if you feel like that's something you want. Or occasionally, if you want it to look really old, the way this floor is, if it's you want it to read more as just a tight fit, just do one line. And you can make them not necessarily perfect, 
you can see I'm just skimming yeah. over kind of quick.